when artillery shells stop counterattack charge. So I had a Thompson submachine gun because I couldn't fire the rifle. And I would reverse, instead of going this way, I would on the side out and see the target here. I start over here. I should hit it. But I ran out of ammunition. And then I'm down in a hole, filling up my clips. The Germans outskirted me and went around. They took the hill back. And I told my buddies to watch out for the machine gun. And then he stood up and got shot. I crawled up and picked him up and he died in my arms and I said, I just lost it then. I threw everything off, picked up the Thompson and I charged the hill and I don't know how many shot it. I captured, we captured so many prisoners. And then we returned back to the camp with the platoon. And we had to go after the lost battalion. There was one unit. There was, this hill overlooked the whole valley. So every time troop movements were going towards the lost battalion, artillery shells would bomb shell them. So we had to take this hill. So after we took this hill, well, we went in to rescue the lost battalion, the Texas Division. 100, 280 men were surrounded for weeks. They would drop supplies to them, but they would be caught in the trees. They would roll down the hills and the Germans would it. So it was uh, our duty to rescue the lost battalion. 280 men, and during this whole campaign, 800 was, was shot or killed to rescue 280 men. I got wounded before the rescue, but I Company came up with 12 men. K Company came up with 17 men standing. And when the Dalkus asked for review of the troops, there were only a handful. So the Dalkus says, where's the rest of the troop? I said, they have but And the Colonel Pence says, this is the, what's left of the 442nd. But nine months I was in the hospital, and I come out. But 52 years later, President Clinton gave me this. <laughs> so now that's my story. And uh, prior to uh, prior to that, in 2004, uh, when uh, the uh, World War II memorial was dedicated, uh, President Bush, in his remarks, uh, went into the, the story that uh, George has just told. But this was told but not by George, but by President Bush. Um, I'd like to ask at this point, uh, if there are, anyone has any questions, please. Yes. Thank you. Sir, so it, uh, it is very interesting that you say that. Um, uh, the Japanese Americans uh, fighting against uh, the, their own racial ancestry was not an easy thing. But their loyalty was to the United States government. And that's what motivated them. So during the war, they fought feverishly for, uh, for the defeat of Japan and for the uh, victory of the United States for freedom. Immediately after the war, they fought equally, I mean, they struggled equally feverishly uh, for the demobilization of Japan 
and also for the, for, the, for the success of the occupation. They serve as a bridge between the American officials and the Japanese officials uh, with their language and with their um, knowledge of the culture and customs, which, makes, which made a big difference uh, in the success of uh, the occupation. And uh, speaking about that, I'd like to ask Grant if he would make one comment uh, in his interrogation of a Japanese uh, prisoner. Grant, you know where you sit? You, re you recall the comment that you made uh, when you, t the Japanese prisoner said you are a traitor? During the uh, interrogation, <clears throat> This was an officer. Generally speaking, the Japanese were very cooperative, but this uh, officer was very uh, reluctant. He was brought in on a stretcher. He was kept, he was wounded, so I asked the guard to have him uh, given first aid treatment and then brought in early in the morning for interrogation. And when I inquired how the uh, uh, treatment was, he looked at me and he said, you're a traitor. I said, traitor? I said, you can see I'm an American. I'm an American soldier fighting for my country. You, as a Japanese, a loyal Japanese soldier fighting for your country. And if you were to cut our vein, the same blood would flow but don't you call me a traitor. But uh, he called me a traitor again. I had him uh, placed in a uh, enlisted men's uh, stockade and he was placed in the center. And when I arrived, he pulled my trousers and said, Mr. Interpreter, <clears throat> I'd like to die. I said, how would you like to die? He said, I want you to shoot me, shoot you. I said, I don't have any bullet to waste on you but I do have a sword that you could commit harky and demonstrate how it is done for the enlisted man. But, and I left, and the second time around, I came, he said, Mr. Interpreter, I have a change of thought. <clears throat> uh, please get me out of here. And he was very cooperative. I, I had a very uh, positive report. <clears throat> <clears throat> 